So today in AP World, uh, we got into World War One and how and why that war started. And you know, we got students doing a structured academic controversy, right? Which is really teaching them how to argue a perspective and defend it with evidence uh, and listen to a different perspective that's argued with evidence and then to kind of shed that structured argument, right, that they have and build consensus with a group about, you know, a conclusion. Uh, and they don't have to agree, uh, but they have to be able to explain why they have either agreed and come to consensus or why they uh, have disagreed and, and um can't come to a consensus. Uh, and so we did that, and you know, one perspective was looking at the historical argument that Germany is primarily to blame um, for World War I and for the escalation to get to the point where we had to call it World War I or the Great War. Um, and then the other side was looking more at the, you know, the totality of blame of, of all major European parties involved with imperialism and, and militarism build up and the alliance system and you know these different things what they call the main causes um, and so each side was able to look at those and you know I, I, I do this before we talk about the Treaty of Versailles because most students today when they look at the evidence and what led up to it they come to a conclusion that there's shared blame um, but at that time that wasn't the case. Um, you know, Germany received the blame in the Treaty of Versailles as basically being the only um, power to, on, on that side to survive the war with the Ottoman Empire and Austrian Hungarian Empire collapsing. <coughs> and so they kind of come to that conclusion that everybody's blamed. But historically, Germany was blamed. They were blamed in the Treaty of Versailles. The provisions of the Treaty of Versailles is directly what led to World War II and the rise of fascism and Hitler. Um, and so we kind of, we talked about that. And one of the things that we, we got into a discussion about is the power of individual decisions because nations didn't decide to go to war. When we even talk about blaming Germany, right? Like Germans didn't vote to go to war. It wasn't, you know, a popular vote or anything like that. It was the choices of a few diplomats and a few leaders. Uh, and it just really, like, it struck me as we were having this conversation and we, we, we always get to this point, right? We talk about um, Europeans' first encounter with Native Americans and the decisions that were made to allow the Europeans to survive uh, and to live, and eventually that led to um, the conquest and genocide of Native Americans. And so we, we've talked about this idea throughout history that individual decisions hold great weight and great power, and that means we need to center that, right, like in our own lives, that our decisions of who we pick to lead, who we choose to make those decisions for a large group, whether it's a nation or a school or whatever it may be, um, really needs to be thoughtful and, and we really need to have faith that that is the person that we trust to make those decisions um, and that different perspectives are included in that. And so it was just a really good focus on us as individuals and what our choices are and what are the ramifications for those choices because a lot of times it has unintended consequence. So once again, like focusing on intent versus impact, uh, we need to factor in what the impacts could be uh, and not just focus on what we want to happen with our intentions. And so, you know, kind of a, a good history lesson that turned into a more philosophical discussion about the power of an individual decision. So uh, just always a good day to be able to have those those talks with the kids and to see what they're thinking and we'll see what their perspective is as, as they're growing and learning uh, and as I'm growing and learning. So we'll see you tomorrow.